Hi there, I'm Mike Gales for Everlast Nutrition. And in this video, I wanted to get you heart smart. And I wanted to do this particular video because far too often people are so obsessed and focused on their muscles that they forget about their insides. Far too often you see a big muscle bound monster of a man that looks all jacked and in shape, but if you ask them to jog around the block one time, he'd probably die. And there's no point looking like you're in shape, but not being able to take advantage of your body to do the things in this life that you really want to be able to do. It's kind of like having a fancy sports car that has no engine. What's the point? And to do my viewers a solid, I wanted to cover the very basics of your cardiovascular system. And I'm also going to throw in some hand-drawn sketches. Now, they're not going to win any artistic award, but hopefully they'll help get the point across. And basically what I'm looking to do with this video is to demystify some of the terminology that you may come up against when you're talking about your cardiovascular system. So where to begin? Well, let's take a look at your lungs. You know that you have two of them and their main purpose is to exchange carbon dioxide for oxygen. The carbon dioxide containing blood is pumped into the lungs by your heart. The hemoglobin in your blood exchanges the carbon dioxide for oxygen. The oxygenated blood then leaves your lungs and is brought back to your heart. Your heart then ejects the oxygenated blood to be circulated throughout your body to supply your cells with the oxygen that they're gonna to need to produce ATP. Next up, let's take a look at your blood. Your blood is a fluid that transports oxygen, nutrients, and hormones to the cells of your body. It also collects the byproducts such as heat and waste from these cells. The majority of your blood is plasma, which is mostly water. You also have red, and white blood cells, and you also have platelets. Your red cells contain the protein hemoglobin, which transports oxygen and carbon dioxide. Your white cells are basically the cells of your immune system. Your platelets give your blood the ability to clot so that you don't bleed to death from a simple scratch. All right, now we're getting to it. So let's take a look at your heart. Well, your heart is basically a muscle that acts as a pump. And what it does is it pumps blood. It's roughly 10 ounces and it beats on average 72 times per minute. Your heartbeat is involuntary, which means that you can't directly control it. Your body has internal pacemakers in place to keep your heart rhythmic. Blood leaves the heart and is carried away throughout the body by your arteries and is brought back to the heart via your veins. So here is a simple sketch of your heart, just like something you would see on Valentine's Day. Think of your heart as being divided into four separate quadrants, the right and left atriums, and the right and left ventricles. The right side of your heart sends the deoxygenated blood to the lungs where the carbon dioxide can be exchanged for oxygen. The left side gets the oxygenated blood from the lungs and it pumps it into your body so that your cells can use that oxygen to make ATP. Now that we've gone over the main characters involved, let's take a look at some measurements of your cardiovascular system. And let's start by taking a look at your heart rate. Your heart rate is how many times your heart will beat per minute. The average person has a resting heart rate of around 72 beats a minute. Your maximal heart rate is calculated by the equation of using 220 and then subtracting your age. So in my case, I'm 40, and so my maximum heart rate is 180 beats a minute. That is not to say that I physically couldn't push my heart beyond that point, but it's probably not safe and not a good idea. Now, I bring this up because many trainers are going to use a percentage of your maximal heart rate to prescribe exercise intensity. There is a more complicated heart rate reserve method, but I want to keep it simple. And to do that, let's just multiply the desired intensity by your maximal heart rate. So if you wanted to train at a 50% intensity level, well then in my case I would aim for 90 beats per minute, which is 50% multiplied by my maximal heart rate of 180. Or in my case 80% for example would be 144 beats per minute. And a little note that you will be in an aerobic zone from 70 to 80% of your maximal heart rate and an anaerobic zone from 80 to 90% of your maximal heart rate. So let's move on to calculate your heart rate. A heart rate monitor is the easy way to do that. And they're not that expensive and it will even calculate your heart rate while you're exercising. But if you don't have one, then use something that measures time in seconds, like a watch or your smartphone, and get ready to keep track of time for 30 seconds. Take your radial pulse, which can be found on your wrist, just under your thumb. Use your first two fingers to feel for a heartbeat and not your thumb as you may get confused from the pulsations emitted from your thumb. So the first two fingers it is. You could also take your carotid pulse by placing those two fingers on either side of your neck 
roughly just below the point of your jawbone. So in either spot, you're gonna lightly palpate and feel for a pulse and count the number of pulses that will occur over a 30 second period. Then you're gonna multiply that number by two to get your beats per minute. Another option is to go high tech by using an app on your smartphone. I'm using an app called Cardio, and that's with two eyes, and it's free. Just place your finger over the light and the camera, press the button in the center of the screen, and the app will calculate your heart rate for you. So here are my last five readings, which average roughly around the low 40s. And we're gonna get to why it's that low in just a moment. Next, let's take a look at stroke volume. And your stroke volume is the amount of blood ejected by the left ventricle of your heart per beat. And your stroke volume usually increases proportionally along with exercise intensity. And that's because with more blood filling the left ventricle, a stretch reflex is triggered which forces a stronger contraction, which in turn ejects more blood. Next up, let's take a look at your blood pressure. And now your blood pressure is the amount of pressure that's exerted on the walls of your arteries. There are two numbers to know. Your systolic pressure is the pressure when your heart contracts, and your diastolic is the pressure when your heart relaxes. Having a blood pressure of 120 over 80 millimeters of mercury or lower is considered to be optimal. You may hear high blood pressure being referred to as having hypertension. If you're curious about blood pressure and want to learn more about it, I will leave a link in the description below to a video specifically devoted to blood pressure. Now let's take a look at blood flow and your body has the ability to allocate blood to where it is needed the most. For example, if you are running, then more blood will be delivered to those muscles being used. In that case, it would be your legs. Whereas if you were doing bicep curls, then more blood would be directed there. You may hear guys in the gym talk about a pump. This is just the muscles getting pumped with that extra blood. And finally, let's take a look at your cardiac output. Now this is the amount of blood that's pumped out of your heart over the period of one minute. Your cardiac output is measured in liters per minute and it's the result of multiplying your stroke volume by your heart rate. Now a key point of all of this is that with exercise, your body's gonna require a lot more oxygen. And now the big question becomes, why? Your body can only use a source of energy called ATP, and you will need more energy for your body to move your muscles during exercise. Your body is gonna quickly run out of that ATP stuff. That's just gonna have to start producing more ATP via your oxidative system. That means that the cells in your muscles are gonna need more oxygen to do that. Your circulatory system is now going to have to work quicker to provide that needed oxygen to those working muscles. And now I just want to run down quickly how your body is going to respond to cardiovascular training. Your heart may get a little larger. This is due to the left ventricle increasing in size, but don't worry, it's a good thing. Your stroke volume will increase because your heart has become stronger and more efficient. Your resting heart rate will go down. Because the contraction of your heart is stronger, it doesn't have to beat as often to supply your body with the same amount of blood. You see, by training your cardiovascular system, your system is going to adapt to become more efficient. For example, the average person has a resting heart rate of 72 beats per minute. As we saw before, because I train my cardiovascular system, my resting heart rate is in the low 40s, which means that in a 24 hour period, it's pretty much beating half as often. Now imagine it like a sports car, your engine only has so many miles to give and that your heart has only so many beats in it per lifetime. Well, at only 40 beats a minute, I haven't put all that much mileage on the engine of my sports car. And so the engine of my body, which is my heart, should be good for quite some time to come. Your maximum heart rate seems to be genetically limited, so it won't really improve all that much with exercise. Training will increase the efficiency of blood transportation to tissues and cells. There will be an increase in the number of your capillaries and increased blood volume. Even though your blood pressure will rise during exercise, the long-term net effect is that your resting blood pressure will go down. So for all of you guys out there with blood pressure problems, exercise should be your new best friend. Although if you have very high blood pressure, I still would stay away from very heavy lifting as it does momentarily spike your blood pressure. So for you guys with that high blood pressure, maybe some lighter weights and some more cardio work will be of a greater benefit. And now that you know a little bit more about your heart and how it works, hopefully now you're heart smart. Yet the smartest thing you can possibly do with all this information is to start training your cardiovascular system with at least the same enthusiasm that you train your muscles. And this way you're not only gonna look like you're in shape, but you're actually gonna be in shape. 
This has been Mike Yale's Forever Last Nutrition, and if you like these videos, then please click below to like or subscribe, as we're constantly posting of great ideas, tips, and great information to get you into the absolute greatest shape possible.